Grace and peace to you, church family and guests joining us online. Welcome to this January the 17th edition of Virtual Worship with Pastor Mark. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we begin this time of worship, I want to take a few moments to say thank you for your prayers, love, and support as I have been recovering from COVID-19. I still have not yet made a complete recovery, but each day I'm doing better. And I thank God for that. One of the common effects of having COVID-19 or being sick with some other illness is fatigue or weariness. One can get exhausted doing the most menial tasks. However, one does not have to be physically ill to be weary. We can become weary from working too much or worrying too much. Being weary is not good for one's spiritual life. And so Jesus offers us a way to reduce our burdens so that we can more effectively serve him. We're going to talk about that a little later. Here now, this call to worship. Our God is a God of power and strength. God created each one of us with tender care. Our God is a God of majesty and awe. God walks with each of us every step of the way. Our God is a God of glory and wonder. God loves each of us with tenderness and passion. Our God calls us each by name. God calls each of us to unite in worship together. Come, let us worship our awesome God. Now is the time to worship Come Now is the time to give your heart Come Just as you are to worship Come Just as you are Now is the 
time to give your heart Come just as you are to worship Come just as you are Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, you are our rock, our refuge, our resting place. We have gathered here today to sing your praises and to worship you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. As we worship you today, we pray that the Holy Spirit would strengthen our faith so that we can endure the storms that come our way. Fill us with your love so that we can love those who seek to harm us. And fill us with your peace as we trust you through all of life's ups and downs. Be with us now and bless this time of worship to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our scripture reading today is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is God's word for us today. May God add his blessings to it. Amen. A missionary in the Philippines was on his way to the local market to get some food and other supplies. As he was driving along in his Jeep, he came to an old man who was carrying a heavy load. Having compassion for him, the missionary invited the old man to ride along in the jeep. The old man accepted the gracious invitation and got in. After a few minutes, the driver turned his head to see how the old man was doing. To his surprise, he found him still straining under the heavy load, for he had not taken the burden off his shoulders. Now, if you were that missionary... How would you respond? You might think that guy is a little dense. You might think his elevator does not make it to the top floor or he's a few fries short of a Happy Meal. Whatever your initial reaction would be, would you not invite that guy to take the burden off his shoulders? Maybe you would stop the Jeep and help him lift it off his shoulders and, and put it in the back seat. You would probably want to help him lighten his load. Now we all have burdens to bear. Some of our loads are light and some of our loads are heavy. But we all have burdens to bear. Children go to school and have homework to do. I remember many, many years ago when my son Will was in preschool and I came home from work and I asked Will what he had done today in preschool. And Will said, I got homework. And I said to Karen, homework? Isn't he a little bit young for homework? And then Will showed me his homework. He was learning to write his name. And he told me, I just love my homework. If my friends come over to play, I'm going to tell them to go back home until I'm done doing my homework. I love doing homework. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, boy, we need to get a tape recorder or a video recorder and make a tape of this. Because in about 10 years, your attitude's probably going to change. I love doing my homework. <laughs> well, we all have some kind of burden that we carry around from day to day. Some of us may have financial obligations that are, are weighing us down, while others may have a family sickness or a death that is weighing them down. Weariness is a problem that we all face in life. Job said in chapter 14, verse 1, that man born of woman is of few days and full of trouble. And too often we're like that old man who, who got into the Jeep but kept that heavy burden on his shoulders. And that's why we need to hear again and again Jesus' invitation to us. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus does not ask us to carry our burdens all by ourselves. Instead, Jesus invites us to become his yoke mate, to team up with him. Jesus invites us to enter into a covenant relationship with him. Jesus invites us to learn how to carry the load by working beside him and learning from him. 
Now, those of us who were born after tractors replaced horses and oxen in the field have a harder time appreciating and understanding Jesus' invitation. One of my own misunderstandings concerned the yoke. For a long time, I thought the yoke was made for only one animal. However, I came to understand that the yoke was a commonly used wooden instrument that was shaped to rest on the neck and shoulders of two animals that were teamed together. Now, yoked together, tasks were far easier for two oxen than one. And if one was a young ox, it was much easier to have an older, stronger companion to share the burden. Jesus does not ask us to carry the burdens of this life alone. Instead, Jesus asks us if we want help carrying our burdens. And if we do, if we want a lighter load, then we're invited to yoke up with Jesus. Jesus wants to help us carry the load. And that's why Jesus says today, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In the midst of this invitation is a promise. A promise that we are all given. Come unto me, Jesus says, and I will give you rest. Jesus promises to give rest to those who come to him. Now, if any other person made such a promise, we might be skeptical because we do not know if they possess the power to fulfill it. But what about our Lord? Can we count on Him to make good on such promises? Oh, yes, we can. Definitely, yes, we can. We can count on Jesus to come through on this promise because Jesus has the power to fulfill His promises. The New Testament affirms that Jesus is God. Jesus is God with us. Jesus holds all the power in heaven and on earth in the palm of His hand. The Bible says that by Christ... All things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. And so when Jesus makes a promise, it's not a shallow, empty promise because Jesus has the power to fulfill it. And Jesus' name also ensures us that he will make good on his promises. In the Bible, there are many names ascribed to Jesus, Lord, Savior, Master, Teacher, Messiah, Christ, and so forth. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, Jesus is identified as the rider of the white horse. His name is Faithful and True. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, the one sitting on the throne, the one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, says that His words are trustworthy and true. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says this about Himself. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not only are Jesus' words trustworthy and true, Jesus says that He is the truth. And what a joy it is to know that our Lord and Savior is always truthful in what He says and always faithful in fulfilling His promises. Now, Jesus' prescription for our weariness is not more leisure time. He doesn't say, come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'm going to give you a vacation. Have you ever come back from a vacation more tired than when you left? For months you've been waiting to go on a vacation so that you can have time to rest and relax and refresh yourself. And then when the vacation is over, you need another vacation just to rest from the one you just took. I've had a few vacations like that. One that sticks out in my mind 
is a vacation that I took with my family back when I was a boy to Florida. Because my parents farmed, we didn't take many major vacations. And when we did take one, my mom was sure to, to cram in as many activities as possible in order to make it worth the trip. Anyway, we flew into Miami, spent a day at the ocean, and then started going on what seemed to be all the tourist uh, attractions from Miami until Tampa. If there was something to see, we saw it. Kennedy Space Center, SeaWorld, Disney World, Cypress Gardens, the works. For a whole week straight, it seemed that as though we were constantly going from one place to another. There was no rest for the weary on that vacation. Now Jesus' prescription for weariness is not a vacation. And Jesus doesn't tell us that we need a good night's rest in bed. Instead, the yoke is our key to rest. Christ's yoke is our key to rest. We so often try to carry the load all by ourselves, but when we work alone, we wear ourselves down. And so Christ invites, invites us to, to get harnessed together with Him, to take off our yoke and, and to put on His yoke. And while we may feel that we need a bed, Christ says that what we really need is a different yoke. We need His yoke. The yoke is a place of labor. A yoke is placed on oxen to get work done, to, to plow a field or to pull a cart. The oxen's master places the yoke on the oxen to harness their power so that they will serve him and perform the desired task. The problem with us is not that we must serve some master or perform some task. The, the problem is really what master we serve and what tasks we perform. So here in, in Matthew, Jesus is inviting us to work with him and for him. And when we take the yoke of Christ, we soon learn what is important work and what is not. We learn that what we do for him totally eclipses anything else that we could do. When we begin working under Christ's yoke, we have the assurance that Christ is looking out for us, and thus we don't have to worry about other less trivial matters. Under Christ's yoke, we find restful activity. The yoke is also a place of learning. Jesus invites us to take his yoke upon us and learn from him. A tourist once stopped by an Amish farmer who was plowing his field with a team of oxen. And he noticed that one of the animals was a lot bigger than the other. And this seemed strange to him, and so he ran out to the field and asked the farmer about it. And the farmer told the tourist that the big animal was an older animal that was well-trained, and the smaller was a young animal that was new to the yoke. And the farmer said that the older ox was the best ox he had ever had. And he knew his way around the field. <clears throat> and then he explained to the tourist that the reason he put the younger one with the older, stronger, more knowledgeable ox was so that the older ox could teach the younger ox how to plow. And the farmer continued, if I, have never, if I never put them together, the younger one would never learn. By himself, the younger ox would pull himself to death. But yoked together with the wiser ox, he learns to cooperate and let the stronger ox help him. Similarly, we must yoke ourselves to Christ if we want to be taught. One cannot learn anything if he or she is not around a teacher. And so Christ invites us to be yoked together with him so that he can teach us and our load will be lightened. Are you weary and burdened today? Are you carrying a heavy load? Then listen to Jesus. His invitation is open to all. Come to me, says Jesus, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. From wherever you've been Come broken hearted Let rescue begin Come find your mercy O oh sinner come near Earth has no sorrow That heaven can't heal So lay down your burdens Lay down your shame Thanks for joining me for this January 17th edition of Virtual Worship with Pastor Mark. I hope that you can join me again in the near future. Until then, may God bless us with peace, that we may live together in gentleness and humility. May God bless us with patience, that we may endure in the time of trial. May God bless us with mercy, that we may be pardoned when we have done wrong. And may God bless each one of us with strength so that we may stand firm in times of distress. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.